Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome. So today is going to be a little bit different and um, maybe a little unconventional, so to speak. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about a few things that goes on um, in this YouTube community and world. And I know I'm not super immersed into it, um, but I am on one hand and I'm not on another. So I want to talk to you kind of about both sides of it. So I am subscribed to many channels, as I'm sure all of you are, and I have my favorites that I really enjoy and I am like die hard. I comment on every single one of their videos. I watch every single one no matter how long or how short. Like I'm super die hard. And um, I've come to the realization that, and I've known this kind of for a while, but the realization is that we are a demanding bunch as an audience. And that sucks. We feel that we are entitled to dictate what they do, what they give us, how long they give it to us for, and all that stuff. And that's and that's not fair to them who are putting their heart and soul, their time into making this a career. And I say that because it takes a lot. And I never really thought that it did. But as I've jumped into this and I'm doing it more and more often, I realize how difficult it is to get up three videos a week. I can't even do that right now. Um, so those who do three and those who even do more than that, like kudos to you. Like you're amazing. But I realize as an audience we feel we can demand perfection from them. And we forget that they are human. They make mistakes. They may change. So, you know, you can quote me on something that I said 10 years ago when I was 18 years old, but at 18 years old, I didn't know a lot of things. Um... I wasn't as educated on world problems of the world. I wasn't, you know, perfect by any means. I was 18 years old. But I've changed my views on things, and I'm 28 years old. My seasons of life have changed. 18, I didn't have a kid. I wasn't married. I'm 28. I'm married. I have a kid. She's four. Like... I said before I was pregnant with her that I would never let her be, like, attached to a phone, attached to a screen, attached to all that stuff. But you know what? Sometimes it's so much easier to let her do that so that I can get stuff done than to fight with her for two hours. So, we have to remember that, yes, we want to hold people accountable for their actions and the things that they say, but at the same time, I have to remember that people change, people grow, people learn, they become more educated, they more, they, you know, have different seasons in life. So before we get on our high horses and be like, oh, well, you lied because you said 10 years ago or you said three years ago that you would never do this, this or that. It's like, OK, well, what circumstances in their lives have changed? Have you thought about that yet? Like, have you thought about what possibly could have changed for them to have to make a decision to change their mind on something? And we're all entitled to change our mind. Dude, I could love peanut butter today and then tomorrow I hate peanut butter. I changed my mind. I didn't like it. No, I love peanut butter, so that's not a thing for me. But that's an example. Like, somebody could say that they love a shirt that they bought yesterday and then literally go home, put it on, wear it once or twice or out, and then realize, oh my god, I hate this shirt. It's the most ugliest thing in the world. Why? What was I thinking? 
It happens. We're entitled to change our minds and we're entitled to make mistakes. We are human. It is a human nature to do that. That's the kind of thing we got to think about. So we want perfect content. We want everything. They can't mess up. They can't be, they can't mess up, but then we want them to be super real so, so that we can see their mistakes. But then it's like, okay, well, hold on. We wanted them to be perfect. So that's not fair. There's a double, there's a double-edged sword. So most people are trying to teeter in the middle of, okay, I'll give them my real self, but then I'll give them, you know, the perfection side. But the truth is that there's, there's neither. None of them, it can't truly be balanced. It'll keep teetering. There will be times in which they're perfect and there are times in which they're not. And that's that's reality. And perfection is literally unattainable. There's no such thing as perfection. So why do we ha- why do we hold them to a higher standard than we hold maybe ourselves? Because ultimately we should have them be on the same level as where we hold ourselves and even maybe just a little bit below like we should hold ourselves higher than we hold anybody else because we are the ones that are accountable to ourselves they aren't really accountable to us because we don't know them they are a person behind the camera or in front of the camera but they are human beings and that's something that I've I remember at the end of the day. And it that's hard because I want to think, oh, their their lives are so glamorous, you know, they they get all these this they get all this free makeup, they've made it, they've got all these cute clothes, you know. But at the end of the day, they're human. They have struggles just like we do. They have health problems just like we do. And I think we forget that and we don't allow them to live their life like they have those issues. We think, oh, you're sick. You still have to film. And that's not right. That's not how any of this should be. It should be, oh, you're sick. You need to take a few days off work, just like you would if you worked in an office. If you're sick and you can't get out of bed and you can't do anything and you're going to be useless, are you going to go to work? No. Generally, you take the time off to get better. Just because they work from home doesn't mean that they don't have that right to take those days off and get better. And if they have a... um, ongoing illness that, you know, maybe it's chronic pain that they're always in pain and they have a flare up that day that is so bad that they can't function. Why can't they have that? If we as an audience have those days, when I was younger, I had the worst cramps. It's a little TMI, but when my period came around, I had the worst cramps. I couldn't function. I would roll up in a fetal position. Like, that's how it was. Got on birth control that fixed it. But that's how I was. Cramps were the worst. So why can't somebody who's in front of the camera have that same thing? If they have severe cramps, why can't they take the day off to mend themselves? Honestly, like, we, we're we holding them to this standard, like, they have to be so perfect and so amazing, and it's like, that's not reality. So why, why is that acceptable? I want to know why. Can you tell me? Because do we really hold, like, movie stars accountable? Actors and actresses, do we? Do we hold them accountable in the same way because we went and saw one of their movies or we've seen all of their movies so if they do something bad we're like eh it's whatever generally we get shocked and then we throw like it go it's water under the bridge but 
with YouTubers and social media, like influencers, all of that stuff, we don't hold, we hold them accountable for things that they did years and years ago. And we bring it up every chance we get. And I, and I lumping we in there because I'm talking about us as an audience. I don't personally do this. I don't personally go, oh, you said two years ago you'd never do sponsorships and now you're doing sponsorships. Like, why? What's the point? I'm assuming something in their life changed and they decided to do a sponsorship. Right? Something, maybe they needed a little extra cash so they did a sponsorship video. Who knows? I don't know. And I don't care. And we as audiences shouldn't totally care unless they aren't divulging that it is a sponsored video. Like they're supposed to. Like that you can hold them to. If they're doing something that they're not supposed to, then yeah, go ahead. Hold them accountable. But if they're still doing what they want, let them. So I follow Crystal Clear Makeup and I have talked about her in videos and everything. I love her. She is so amazing. And she posted a video the other day that was, she called herself the silent YouTuber or influencers, the silent influencer, because she does quickie two to five minute videos more often than not. And people get mad at her for that because they wanted, they want lengthy chit chat videos. They want reviews. They want all of these things. It's like, for me, if that works for her, more, more power to you. Like if that's, if that's what's ultimately going to work is putting out two minute videos, three minute videos, four minute videos of quick little editing of the eye looks. I'm sure it took her 30 minutes to do the look, 40 minutes, an hour, but she's condensed it down into a short time frame, which I wish I could do. I struggle with it. I've tried. Doesn't always work the well as as well as she does. She does it very seamlessly, in my opinion. People get mad at her for that. But then the, on the other hand, there's part of our audience that love it. I love it. Honestly, I don't care. She could give me a video where she sits there and talks about absolutely nothing. Or she talks about, you know, a garbage bag. And I'd probably still watch it and I'd probably still listen and tell her it was the best thing ever. That's how much I am dedicated as a fan of hers. But as a fan, I want to be able to say, hey, can you do a purple eye look? And hope that she would take me asking and do that. But if she never does, I'm not going to get mad at her for that. What would be the point? If she comes back and be like, hey, Katie, um, purple doesn't look good on me, so I'm not going to do it. I'll be like, okay, I totally understand. <laughs> or Katie, I hate purple, so that's never going to happen. Okay, I totally get it. So why get angry at her for not doing it? You want to want somebody to look at you and be like, oh, you need to um, wear purple eyeshadow and you hate the color purple. <laughs> Honestly, guys, like we as an audience need to be better. We need to act better. We don't need to go and be upset because someone cuts our hair or someone got extensions and, oh, you look better with long hair. Oh, you look better with short hair. Like, who cares? It's hair. It grows. Cut it off. Grow it out. Cut it off. Grow it out. A million times. But you ha That's your right. How are why are we going to dictate and tell people, oh, no, you looked better that way? Well, what if they don't think that? What if they think they look better with short hair or they think they look better with long hair? That's their prerogative. And us as an audience should just be, hey, cool. She's got long hair now. She's got short hair now. Keep your opinion. If it's not necessarily a nice one, like, oh, you look better with short hair or, oh, you look better with long hair. It's not really a nice compliment. Oh, it looks good, but you looked better this way. It's a backhanded compliment. That's basically like literally saying, I don't like you with long hair or I don't like you with short hair. But you're, you're trying to play it off by like giving them a compliment, but basically you're telling them you don't like it. That's not, that's not nice. And you know, the no offense doesn't mean that what you're saying is any less offending. This may get me a lot of flack and I don't care. I have 27 subscribers. Half of those are my family. Would I love to have hundreds of thousands? Of course I would. I'd love to have a thousand. 
I would love to have 5,000, 10,000, however many people want to talk, listen to me talk or do makeup or talk about makeup. Come listen to me, please. I would truly love to have you be here with me. But at the end of the day, I have to remember that I am an audience member first. I am a subscriber first. I'm a fan first. So I need to remember when when I go and t- to t- talk to somebody or I go to leave a comment on a video that it better be a comment that I would want somebody to leave on my videos. As as a fan, as a subscriber, as a follower, as a whatever you want to call yourself, you should literally be leaving a comment that you would want to receive yourself if you were in their shoes. You don't like the makeup look. Don't like it. Don't comment. Don't say anything. That is that is completely acceptable. That is an acceptable thing. There's no need to be like, that's ugly. I'll never wear that. Why'd you do it? What, what was the point? You know, oh, your hair looked better yesterday. Eh, who cares? My hair is up like this 90% of the time, guys. It's hot as hell where I live, and I don't want to deal with it. That's the truth. That's, that, that's my my truth right there. I am wearing a little bit of concealer and powder because I didn't want to get on here in a full face of makeup and pretend like I know everything or even do my makeup on and talk about this. I want to, I want you to understand that I am serious about this. We need to be better. We need to stop expecting perfection when perfection is not a reality. Yes, we can hold them accountable. But are we holding them accountable for something that when they were younger and didn't know better, they said? Or are we holding them accountable for something that they shouldn't be doing? Do you understand the difference? I can say at 21, 22, I had said that I'd never let my child because I didn't know I was going to have a girl. (laughs) My child do that after watching so many people who do, okay? I swore up and down. I would never do that. That is not the case. I let her have her phone. It's my old phone. There's nothing on it. All she can do is watch YouTube Kids and Netflix. I will give it to her so I can get something done or I can film or I'll put her in front of the TV and put Power Rangers on because that's what her new favorite thing is right now. So you're going to be mad at me for something I said seven years ago when I had no idea. I only had an idea, like a little idea of what it would be like because... I babysat kids for a couple of hours every couple of weeks or at once a week. Like, but I had no true idea about the fact that raising kids and taking care of your kids is a lot harder when it's a 24-7 job. That's not fair. That's absolutely, absolutely not fair. Did I ever know that I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom? No, never thought about it. Knew I wanted kids, but never thought about, like, would I be a stay-at-home mom or would I go to work? No. Never knew. But the minute my daughter was put in my arms, I knew I wanted to stay home and I wanted to raise her and I wanted to do nothing but that for the most part. Absolutely. But that doesn't mean that next year when she starts school that I won't change my mind and be like, no, I want to go to work. I don't want to stay home all day long, all day long by myself. People change and we go through different cycles of life. I'm not the same as I was when I was 15. I'm not the same as I was when I was 21. And when I was 21, I wasn't the same as when I was 15. And I think we forget that. So sometimes I want you to just take a step back and be like, if I were to start from the very beginning today, would I want somebody to comment that on my pictures or video or what tweets, whatever it is, Would you, what you are about to say, would you want somebody to say it to you? Especially strangers. Would you want a stranger to come up to you and say that to you? Because that's ultimately like, yes, we forge some sort of bond and relationship with these people, but we don't really know them. We don't go to their house and talk to them for hours on end. We don't talk on the phone. We might have little short conversations here and there in DMs and all of that stuff. But ultimately, let's be honest, we don't have those conversations. We don't sit there for hours on end. We don't go shopping with each other. We don't go 
you know, to the park or walks or whatever type of friendship you have with people. We don't do that with all these people that we see on the internet, that we watch on the internet, that we interact with on the internet. So why are we holding them to a standard that is literally unrealistic? They are human beings just like this. They have struggles just like us. You know, I started all of this journey what started in the end of 2016. I started really heavily getting into makeup. Like, I've always had a love for makeup. Like, don't get me wrong. I've always loved it. I've just never knew proper techniques um, and all of that stuff. Like, I never really knew. So, like, I started my journey at the end of almost three years ago. And it morphed from watching videos on YouTube and learning and just playing on myself to starting an Instagram account because I didn't want to bombard my family with daily selfies of me in makeup. So I started an Instagram account and that slowly grew very slowly. Um, up until a couple months ago, I was literally going back and forth between about 290 and 275 for months. Like it would go I only had 275 followers, then I'd go up to 290, and then it would go back down, and then it would dwindle for months. And then I met an amazing woman through my brother a couple months ago, and she told me if I did one of her looks, she would repost it. And she did. I did it. She did it. And now I have over 600 followers. Now, in the grand scheme of things, that's, that's not a lot, for especially for people who have millions and hundreds of thousands, but... I was a, sorry, I got a little teary-eyed. It was amazing. Like, as weird as that is, it was amazing to see a jump when, for the longest time, it would teeter back and forth. I would get, wake up, I would go to bed and I hit 300 and then all of a sudden wake up the next morning and I only have, you know, 275. It's a very nerve-wracking thing because we're trying to get validation from strangers to say that yeah you're doing a good job but when you don't get that validation like not everybody's seeing you you kind of think well what the hell am I doing so different from all these people and that's hard it honestly is is like I I think about that all the time like what am I doing that's so different like why is it I can one one picture can get you know 80 to 100 likes but then I post a picture that's super similar just a different look and that only gets 23. It's like, what, what's going on? So like, I've come to realize they've worked and they put the work in and it's hard. But I also realized that we're all human too. Because ultimately at the end of the day, that's, we're human. We make mistakes. We work our asses off to get where we want to be. Because if you don't, then you're not going to be where you want to be. So I just want to say, like, remember that. Remember that each and every person is different. They're in different phases of life than we are. We could be the same exact age. You and I, we could be the same exact age. You don't have kids. You're not married. You're not looking to get married. You're not looking to have kids. It's perfectly acceptable. I don't care. Have kids, don't have kids. Get married, don't get married. But we all go through different phases of life. It's the truth. So why do we have to hold everybody else accountable for things like that for going through life for dealing with things that's not fair it's part of the audience and it's part of being a content creator i can see both sides so as someone from the audience i'm saying if you are only in the audience and you are not a content creator then look the into yourself before you comment on something and ask yourself would i want a stranger on the street to say this to my face before you comment on it. If it's not a nice comment, would you want somebody that you don't know saying something like that to you? Look at yourself if someone's, if who that content creator that you're watching has made a mistake or had said something in the past and they're doing things differently. We need to look into ourselves and say, am I holding them accountable for something that they're doing wrong? Or am I holding them accountable of something that they said when they were in a different phase of life? Because they're Those are two, absolutely two different things. So you got to remember that. At the end of the day, they're human just like we are. They have lives just like we do. They hurt just like we do. So quit expecting them to be perfect. They're not. I am not. I've scrapped so, I've scrapped a couple of videos because I couldn't make the video less than, like, perfect. And that sucks. 
because I worked really I worked really hard on editing it I worked hard on filming it and creating it in the first place but I messed up so many times that it's like crap I can't fix that I said something and I fumbled my words so badly that it's not fixable and you don't want to see that because you then you can't understand me it's that level of perfection that we put on them and hello they make mistakes they should be able to own that one of the first videos that i filmed my mom looked at me and goes katie you say um like uh a lot and so now i'm self-conscious about that and super insecure about it that i try so hard to not do it like I just started to do it right then. Like I try so hard not to do it. But the problem with that is that's how I am when I'm talking in real life. Um, like, oh, uh, because sometimes my brain is going so much faster than my mouth can get words out that I have like that uh is me taking a pause to get my mouth back to where my brain is or my brain to slow down to where my mouth is. So it's not because I'm stupid and I don't know what I'm looking for. It's literally that my brain has already sped through it and now my mouth needs to put it out. So why nitpick on that? That's something so nitpicky that is so stupid. I say so a lot too, as you can see. It's so stupid because when you have conversations with your girlfriends or your friends or whoever you have conversations with, don't you say, um, oh, like, uh, so all the time? So why can't we have those in videos to give you the real authentic, that's me, that's my scatterbrained, whatever you want to call it. So I do my best when I'm editing to edit out those, uh, um, oh, so, uh, pauses because that was something that was brought up by my own mom who is proud of me and loves that I'm doing this but still something that she brought up which is hard and she's someone who loves and adores me it's still hard to hear but that's real life that's who I am so I try to get it out so that it's perfect for you guys but it's not always perfect so like I said put yourself in our shoes and I've got one foot in the audience and I got one foot content creator taking baby steps but ultimately my thing is kindness and we shouldn't bash people for things that they said two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, five years ago. You shouldn't have asked people for things they say, that they say today. Unless they are absolutely wrong. That's it. And even when they're wrong, we shouldn't bash them. It should just be, hey, I know you said this, but I want to bring this to your attention. That it's actually this way. Or it should be this way. It should all be constructive and nicely done. Just remember that they're human. Just like you. They make mistakes. They change their mind. They go through different seasons of life just like you. All right, guys, I'm sure you're sick of hearing me ramble about all of this, but I just wanted to let you know that sometimes you just have to take a step back and think about it if you were in their shoes. I love you guys, and I hope y'all stick around, and I hope we get more of you, but ultimately remember, just be nice. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you understand where I'm coming from. I will see you in my next one.